friends and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. Today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks, uh, some that I haven't shown you before and some that I have, and just kind of explain some of the little things that I do frequently that make a lot of difference. So to begin with, I wanted to show you the first tip is, as you're working on your model, I'm sure this happens to you as, as it does me, I'm working, I'm working, and say the next thing I was going to do is work on cutting out this center face here to make like an extrusion and up, oh, we're all done for the day, I have to put the file aside, I have to go do something else. So what I'll do is I'll save the file, so I'll say file save, and then I'll, for now, I'm going to open up another file, okay? And just pretend, you know, I closed down and, or I did something else, and now we're going to come back to that file, it's time to work on that again. If I reopen the file, you'll notice something neat. It saves the, the view where the camera was pointed right at where I was at. So this is a neat trick that I use both in modeling and in games, uh, specifically with games when you're working, uh, you're going through a level and you say, oh, I want to go down this hallway next. I will point my character down the hallway and then save, and the little thumbnail saves like this and shows me here's where you were at. So this is a great little tip, just it's a subtle little thing, you know, instead of having your whole scene, you can already be zoomed in to where you want it to work. So that's the first tip there. The second tip is um, make sure you're using all of your tools in here, there's a lot of tools in here that people don't use and some of them are very handy, especially this one. If I select these edges and if I want to move these edges up a little bit higher, you'll notice that if I go from the, the side viewpoint here, it's really difficult to do cleanly, you know, to move these edges and not, not disturb the flow of this, this slope. So there's a real simple tool and some people don't know about it so I wanted to show it off. Right here under constraints I can say move along edge constraint. And now if I click and hold the Z arrow here to move up and down, it's maintaining, it's moving along these edges like a track. So I'll move along this track. And this is really handy for doing things like control edges like this. Or if you just need to make an adjustment, say I wanted to make this extrusion smaller, I can move this down. And I know that I'm respecting this slope without damaging it. You can also use uh, face constraint, normal constraint. So learn the situations where these things are handy. All right, so our next tip is that we are gonna be doing a Boolean operation. And what I frequently do is I will move my Boolean into place. So say I wanna cut out this shape here. I wanna make a cut right through it like that. And what I'll do is I won't just say, okay, let's go and make this a Boolean. I'll make a copy of everything really quick before I start. That way, just in case there's a problem, I have access to the original objects. Because frequently, if I go here, compound objects, pro Boolean, I'm already set to uh, subtract, start picking, pick this object. Now this is a pretty clean operation here. There's not going to be a lot of problems, but with some more complex booleans you can have issues. And so it's one of those just in case we have a problem, I want to have a backup. And by keeping these together, a lot of times what I'll do is temporarily take this and I will you do the uh, spatial warping and say connect to this. And now if I move this guy and put him directly on top of here, he's right back in that spot. So now I have exactly where I need to be and I can move it along here. You can also do the same thing with the uh, transformation tool here. If they were in a particular spot, say, okay, let's see where I am on the Y, say 202, let's make it a clean number. If it was exactly here and we did that, we made a copy, right? Then I could always say, it's okay if this copy is here, I don't have to do this aligning because I know that if I put it at 202, he'll snap right back into that spot. So that's our second tip there is uh, when you're doing a, a Boolean operation, make a backup before you do it, just in case, because you never know what you're gonna have happen there. Uh, so our next tip here is um, using our existing faces as a template. I've shown this uh, before, but some people asked about it, so I wanted to show you what I mean. So say we have this object here and I want to make an ob uh, some kind of a surface up here or down here that respects this curve. Um, instead of making a box and trying to edit the vertices and line them all up, you know, that's a big, big time sink. So I'm just going to select these faces and then we will do a detach as a clone. Okay, there we go. So now I have just these faces and I can make my shape in here however I want. So let's do an inset. And we'll bring all that in. Oh, quick word about the inset here as well. This is something I learned just the other day. Bonus tip for you. Uh, I usually pull this drop down here and say by group or by individual polygon, which is cool. You can actually just hit this button here and it does the same thing. So very handy if it happens to come up on polygon, but I need it by group or vice versa. So bonus tip there for you. 
All right, so we'll click apply there and say we've got our inset here and I want to do a little bit of an extrude. Do something like this and just do a little bit of quick modeling because it's fun. That's what we do. Um, like this. This kind of a shape would be very difficult to create if you were trying to respect the, uh, the flow of this by creating an external shape. And by an external shape I mean you know you made a box and then tried to line it up to this existing thing. But here by deleting the excess now I have this object here and it has the exact same pivot of its, of its parent. So I can move this around and if I snap it back to this it'll be right there and I have this additional detail which follows the flow perfectly. This is so great for architecture for character armor pieces and things you want to snap and exactly match the existing flow. Okay, so just a couple more here. The other thing I wanted to show you guys was, uh, uh, here's a word about pivots. So if you have an object like these where the pivot is not ideal, see each of these I would want the pivot to be centered and this one I want it to be centered as well so I can rotate it, but it's way over here. You can, one object at a time, you can select this, go up here and say affect pivot only. I can center to object, I can align to the world, I can do all kinds of things, but frequently I do center to object. And what a lot of people don't understand is you can do that for multiple objects at once. So as long as for all four of these strips I want the pivots to be centered to them, I just select them all and then say center to object and it will do as many objects as you have selected all at once. And that's super handy. So for example, the, uh, the other tip I was going to show you here is rotation. So say I wanted to flip all these around. Well, by default, if I, no, nope, that's not the default. By default, if I select more than one object and I rotate, it's going to create a pivot that is the centered average of all of them, something like this. That's not what I want. So up here, I already had it on. Uh, if I go to my local, now, and if I rotate, even though it only shows up here, watch carefully, both of them rotate together. And by together, I mean they're rotating independently by the same amount. So for example, if I turn on my snaps here and say I wanted to make them 90 degrees, there, now they're 90 degrees, oh, I went a little over 90, 90 degrees to one another, and it's going off the local for each object, even though I have multiple objects selected. This is super handy, especially if you get to a situation like this. Uh, the other day I had to make a uh, vent, like an AC unit, and the top has these little fins, and so this is how I made them. I did a boolean by cutting through a cylinder to create the curved shaped nature of the out edges. But then for these, I just centered the pivots to all, and now if I give them a little bit of rotate, there's your like venting fins coming out. So I just took a plane, sliced it up, did this, and basically took these, and I put them in a Boolean operation like this to cut them out so that they would lose their external, uh, external shapes and just be what we need internally. And so there we created a really complex shape, it looks like, from when you, um, when you first look at it, and it was super, super simple. So let's see, what else have we got today? I think that's all of, our, uh, all of our notes for today. I just wanted to show you guys a couple of quick trip, tips and tricks, it's hard to say. Uh, a couple quick tips for things that I do frequently, and things like moving along the edge, things like this, um, I do all the time. Making uh, copies of the booleans, definitely, you want to have a backup of that. And I did this just the other day. So if you're interested in this um, in more detail, let me know. I can do a small tutorial on that. Oh, and we talked about doing our inset, which was really cool. Let's get that again. I just want to show that off. So we select all of these and say inset. And we bring it up by a certain amount. Then we can just click this back and forth instead of having to do the drop down, which is a little faster than drop down and this. This is one click versus two. So very cool. So I hope you guys have enjoyed just a couple of things that people have been asking about and I wanted to share and reiterate. So if you guys have your own tips, anything that you do that you think would be really handy like this, anything that is uh, that really shortens a workflow, definitely let me know about it. Let's share it with everybody and make sure that we all have the latest tricks up our sleeves, okay? All right, so as always, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.